Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we we Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba amidst the buzz of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Amidst the vibrant energy of the event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local elected leaders hailing from across Manitoba. Now, we delve into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in the province. So we'll be right back after after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Councillor Jack Siemens from Steinbach, Manitoba. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780 780- 416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Jake, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking a simple question, but overarching. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Huh, good question. I think from my father. He uh, he never served uh, in a political role, but he was always a volunteer, right? Life, lifelong volunteer. So that was taught from young on. And uh, part of the whole service, uh, why I ran for city council was I, I was a recreation director for the city of Steinbeck for oh. 18 years. And so that was my profession. But I always thought that I could make better decisions than the, the council I worked for. Every administration person who's listening to this <laughs> is laughing their butts off right now saying, I agree with Jake. <laughs> One of the things I have learned since getting on city council is I had a lot more power to make change as a uh, department head for the parks recreation mm-hmm. than I do as a counselor. As a, and the reason being, uh, when you are in the role of a uh, department head, like I was with parks and recreation, you have the power to ask forgiveness uh, on a decision made. As a counselor, you have to convince three others that you've got a great idea. And you, it's a give and take. So you're, it is different, and, and there are lots of stories around uh, the changes I was able to inflict upon the community, if that's the right word, <laughs> uh, in my role in Parks and Recreation, how we could move the department forward, whereas in council, it takes so much longer to get a decision made on some of the things that I'm passionate about. So this is probably one of the few times that I'm able to a- ask this question. Now, you have been on both sides of that table, presenting to council as administration through recommendations and now receiving recommendations through council yeah. from your administration. What's harder, Re- asking for the re- recommendation or giving the recommendation, in your opinion? Oh, I think uh, it, it changed over time. Yep. The longer I'm on council, the happier I am I'm not <laughs> in the department head role. So at first it was going, well, no, you don't know because I understood the background, yeah, right? And, uh, but the longer I'm on council, the more I appreciate uh, the information we're getting. And I can ask maybe a different question uh, than rest of council because I've been there. But, uh, but overall, now I, I appreciate the information we're getting, and I make the assumption that I'm getting all the information. That's not quite necessarily true. They still want us, right, the, the person who's delivering the information, this is what I want to tell them that means, but I also understand, I think, what the bigger picture looks like. Okay, so let's talk about that bigger picture because you have counsel, I'm assuming in your time on counsel, you've come to the realization that you've had to make some very tough decisions, very tough choices, and those decisions have to be in the best interest of the good of the community. But you have probably come to the realization that you're not pleasing 100% of the people in your community. How do you balance that aspect of the job to ensure that you're making the decision that is going to impact the most, impact the great good of the community, while understanding that you're not going to please 100% of the people? 
Yeah, how do you answer that question? They, <laughs> that's why every municipal leader gets reelected, right? Because they are able to answer that question. So as a councillor, I guess I'll answer it in two ways. As a councillor, you have a role. Your first role is to get reelected. <gasps> Your second role is to, uh, you think, I don't think this way, but I, I think the majority of councillors think that they, they need to take care of the people that got them elected. Yeah. I think overall, I'm of the belief that uh, you get elected to serve everybody. And once the election is done, it's done. And you don't, you service the whole community, not just the, the people you think elected you, okay? And, and the, uh, the other aspect uh, to this is, it took me uh, three, four, six months of meetings when I first got on council that I'm going to upset somebody with a decision on how I think and how I vote on city council. So I'm not going to upset that person at the council chamber or that one, but I'm going to upset somebody. So in the end, what the advice I got from a former councillor who a little mentor on the whole, he says, in the end, you do what your heart tells you to do. You do your homework, number one. You read through all the reports. And so we get an administrative report, we get a land use report, whatever the dish is. Then there's the my version. So I go out and if somebody's asked for a variation or so on, I go approach them and go, why? Have you talked to your neighbor? Have you? So I have to do my own homework because I don't get that information in my council package. So I have to also have my version of what happens in the community. And so I talk to the community before council, then I can make, an, I think, an informed decision. But informed decision is one thing. When you walk into that council chambers, though, you have to be unbiased on every single issue. You, you, you may have unconscious biases about how you're going to vote, but the mayor might say something during that council meeting, the fellow councillor or even a petitioner or a delegate or a public hearing might have someone say, oh, this is why I don't think you should do it. And you have to adapt to those sort of comments. Is it hard to go into a council meeting without a bias while knowing that there is unconscious biases no matter what? I think everybody goes into council chambers with a bias, with with a Thank decision made. Thank you for agreeing with me on that <laughs> statement there. The other thing that has happened, and it's happened to me, I think, twice that I can count, where and and uh, where I've changed my mind during council meeting. Okay. So I there was one time I made a motion, whatever that motion, I can't remember the exact story. There was a motion on the floor. There was a seconder, there was a lot of speak, new information came out, whether from administration, recent information, whatever it's new. And I put up my hand and I said, uh, and, I, and when I spoke to my motion, uh, for the second time, I said, Mr. Mayor, we'd like to vote against this motion that I made. And I'd like to make a new motion because I changed my mind. And uh, so that has happened twice in my, I've been on city council for 18 years now. And so that has happened uh, at, at least once, and I think we've came up with the right decision because of information provided. And so I was challenged on that afterwards by other counselors. Well, you've lost so much face in the community. I said maybe, but I said we still had made the right decision for the community. So. Uh, as of recording this, I just had the pleasure to sit down with the mayor of your community, but and I asked him this question. I'm going to ask you as well, and I'm going to preface it as I always do, that this is a conversation between the councillor and myself, not a motion of council, not a direction of council, yeah. not even a policy of council, just an opinion of the councillor. So in your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest challenge facing the city of Steinbeck today? It is... Uh working with the uh, community as a whole and getting to understand the direction of the city. We put community plans out, we put uh, lots of information out there, we think, but it's unless it affects you, people don't watch, they don't listen, they don't read. We, I mean, we have to do these community plans, but, and I can and talk uh, to my neighbors who are blue in the face that this is gonna happen until they get presented that this three-story building is going up behind them uh, as has been the plan from the day one until it starts to affect them it doesn't matter yeah. and, and so the biggest for me is how do you keep the community involved in, in the big picture of what's happening in Steinbeck in the community okay 
the communication. So how do you communicate with people? Because there's the social media, there's the media, and I had this conversation with your mayor as well. As someone who's worked in the communication field, there's always going to be that one person who says, I didn't hear about it. I didn't understand. What are you talking about? I didn't get that flyer in my mail. I didn't get the tax notice. I didn't get this, that, or the other. You're rolling your eyes, but I, I can imagine you've heard them all, right? Absolutely. It's like the I lost my ma- I lost the my homework in the mail. My dog ate it. Everything yeah. goes under the belt. How do you see yourself as the role of counselor, communicating to people so that they way they understand, and you are going to the people instead of hoping that people come to you. I guess there's a, f- a few ways to do that. You use your social media, you use your local media that is out there, like yep. our, our Which, Steinbeck Online. From what I understand, Steinbeck has great media coverage of your council meetings. Steinbeck Online, we're, plus we're on YouTube, <laughs> uh, it's live, and uh, we have our newspaper. Uh, newspapers suffering like they are all over. and uh, but So you can provide all the information you want, and you can even have, a, we used to have a mayor's weekly update on Steinbeck Online, right, a, a radio and I don't know if that, that doesn't happen as much as it used to. Uh, and we can do all the mail outs we want, we can do, but it, there's an obligation from uh, the public to be involved as well. So we can do everything we do and we need to continue to do that, but we have to hold our public accountable too. And uh, how we do that, uh, we hire communications people in our office to, to do that ongoing, but there's a frustration because the message isn't necessarily getting through. It's a the NIMBY approach, right? Not in my backyard. Yeah. And so uh, on, until it directly affects them, I don't have an answer. There's so so on the flip side of that original question is, what does Steinbeck do right? What is the thing that you think, you know what, while we do have our challenges, which every municipality does, well, at least we have this going for us now. We have uh, no closed door meetings unless it's uh, the three L's, like labor, land, or legal issues, we have no closed door meetings. So the media or the general public is at every single meeting. So whether it's our, uh, we have, we call them SPC meetings, strategic priority committee meetings, and uh, uh, that's where we meet with the community. Yep. So the media is at all of those. Oh, wow. So what happens is, so uh, an an example would be is that uh, somebody has something uh, there's a community uh, food greens bank or uh, helping hands is our food services bank and they want to approach council because they want a grant or uh, whatever but we invite all these community groups to speak and address council we have to train them on what we want to hear but like their long-term plan and so on but the media is also there so when there's a, the media can pick up a story so then they get the press automatically it helps them it helps council that yep. we're trying to listen to the minor hockey to the food grade to arts council to whoever and we and uh, on a monthly basis we'll hear two or three of these every month so we try and cover the whole community so we communicate that way and they get uh, press as well so we're doing that right we're also uh, on social media our uh, Council chambers are on social media, like all our, our meetings are on chamber. Yes, we only get 12 or 15 people watching on a regular basis, whatever that number is, but if it affects them. And uh, I think there are different community groups that do seek uh, counselors, and, and we can reach out to them and, and tell them our stories, whether it's yeah. over coffee. Or, Okay, we've got a couple of re- seniors, uh, that, that, me included. And so we go to the coffee shops, right, in the morning and we, when we talk to different people. That's another form of communication, but that's a bias communication. But it is part of it. So the question is, is uh, what are we doing right? We are on social media. We're doing enough of the right things to get the message out there. That's perfect. Um, I want to turn to my favorite subject, and your mayor painted a vibrant picture of Steinbeck, so I need you to continue uh. painting that picture <laughs> a little bit here. But as someone who is doing a big tour through Manitoba this August, what are some of the tourist destinations that I should see in Steinbeck while I'm there? Absolutely. You need to see uh, our museum, which is uh, our Mennonite uh, culture, is on full demonstration there. And since I'm a blacksmith there, we have to <laughs> talk about it. The uh, uh, Overall, our community is just coming to Steinbeck. You're going to be uh, uh, see the effects. You're going to see our flowers. We were the first community in Manitoba that present flower pots, uh, 270 flower pots on, on posts. 
uh, when you come down our, our, our number 12 on our main street, you'll, you'll see our, uh, we're patriotic with the amount of flags we fly. That comes from a council in the late 80s during the Quebec referendum, or the 1990s, and where they said we need people to know where we stand, that we stand for United Canada. We started to put up a, uh, flags that we run a Canadian flag Oh wow! Uh, on a on a regular basis, and that's the only flag we fly. We don't fly the Manitoba flag. Any other flag we fly. We are we want to be. Uh, we're one Canada. We're one Canada. So we, that that came back from uh, through a, a previous council, like uh, thirty years ago. You'll see the cleanliness of the city. We have a uh, our churches in Steinbeck uh, came up uh, approximately twenty years ago with a pick up and walk event, where in the last weekend in May they. The churches get together, and it, and this is supported by the city. They pick up all the garbage on all the streets, and it's clean. As a recreation director back in the 80s and 90s, I would hire staff during spring break to pick garbage, to clean, to sweep, to do all this. I couldn't get a quarter of the work done that I needed to get done. Uh, but they go in, and in, in a two- to three-hour Saturday morning, they will have 1,700, 2,000 people out, families, with yellow jerseys and they will pick the city clean and pick up six to eight tons of garbage and that came through not city council direction that came through our churches so you will see how clean Steinbeck is and and the pride that's taken because after that you will see people who are out on walks wherever they're going they'll be picking up garbage as they go for the rest of the summer because that's the pride they have in the community so that's awesome. tourists don't see it it's like a but I'm there's just, two types of tourists, right? There's internal tourists, and there's domestic tourists, and then there's international tourists, right? right? Well, three types of tourists. There's the community tourism, which you want that pride in your community. There's the domestic tourists of people like myself, Canadians coming to other municipalities, seeing what it's all about. And then you have the international tourists, because you are so close to the U.S. border. Yeah. We get uh, all of those. Our, our museum, uh, because I work there as, as a volunteer, we see tourists from around the world. It's unbelievable the amount of different cultures oh, wow. that come through. And uh, so that's spectacular. We don't, you don't realize it until you're there and experience it, right? Yeah. And they, the museum will provide us a yearly report on how many different cultures. But yeah, it's, it's a line item in a, in a report, right? But when you're there and you're working with it and, you know, you can't communicate when I'm pounding out something off on the anvil in, in the blacksmith shop, they, uh, they can't, it's hard to communicate because it's not the same language. There's language barrier, but the fact that they're out there and they specifically want to see the museum in Steinbeck, right? So, and uh, so you, there are uh, many different things, but... Uh, well, I'm looking forward to visiting. So I've got to ask one final question here, Jake. What makes Steinbeck such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? There's... Uh, the strength of the, the community has been our churches. Yep. It's been our low crime rate because of churches. It's been the cleanliness of the city. It's the, been the focus of family, not only from, uh, uh, well, a little bit from council, but overall there's a holistic approach to living there. Yep, we've got a lot of the same issues larger centers has. As we grow, our homelessness, our uh, population, our different things, it, it, it grows and it's, it's problematic. But it's still got a, a sense of small town in, in anywhere you live and it's the micro communities within the community, your neighborhood. It's, it, we still have vibrant neighborhoods where they get together with block parties that are promoted by the city. You wanna have a block party? We'll deliver you the barricades, we'll deliver you whatever it is, picnic tables, whatever we do now, but here's a trailer full of stuff. Have a block party. Get to know your neighbor. We we have those kind of community events within, because community isn't about the larger picture, uh, but it's about those little micro communities that are all over, and getting to know your neighbor. And I think we still have that, and in most areas of our our, our city. And uh, I think that is uh, what makes it work. I want to thank you. This has been a fascinating 15-minute conversation. I feel like we just scratched the surface. Hopefully when I'm in Steinbeck later on this year, you and I can have a coffee and we can sit down and continue having that, this conversation. Love, love to give you a tour. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. 
Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Thank you.